Welcome one and all to the Stan Collymore Show. We start this week in Madrid where I visited a civilian legend and Real Madrid star who is no stranger to the biggest of tournaments. I sat down with El Capitan Sergio Ramos to chat Spain and this year's World Cup. Okay, back, okay. Sergio, delighted uh, that you can join me on the Stan Collymore show. Um, the first question is about leadership. Um, did you feel pressure? taking over from a, a legend, the captain's armband, Ica Casillas. How did you feel? Hombre, yo me, me siento muy bien de, de haber cogido ese relevo, ese testigo, y, y yo creo que no es ninguna presión, todo lo contrario. Yo creo que es un, es un reto muy bonito para afrontar después de, de haber compartido con él muchos años de experiencia, tanto en el Real Madrid como en la selección, y ahora, pues, esa oportunidad ¿no? de, de poder llevar el brazalete, liderar pues, el, el vestuario tanto de tu país como del Real Madrid, para mí es un privilegio único. How would you describe your leadership style in the dressing room? Being a captain is a very important job. Um, how do you think you've developed as a captain? Bueno, no sé cómo me verán mi, mis compañeros, pero sí que es verdad que, que yo intento pues liderar de la mejor manera posible, ser honesto, intentar ayudar a, a los compañeros y por encima de todo, pues eh, ser verdadero, ¿no? Eh, y a la hora de ser líder yo creo que debes de ser siempre el primero en dar un, un paso al frente. Para exigir al, al resto de compañeros, uno es el primero que tiene que demostrar y, y yo a lo largo de mis años creo que he ido absorbiendo lo mejor de de cada capitán que he ido teniendo y ahora pues le, le doy un poco eh, pues mi forma, mi, mi color, eh, con mi carácter y, y mi forma de, de sentir y de ver la, las cosas. How do you feel that the, the Spanish squad, the selection, compares now, one of the favorites to win the World Cup, between the squad now and the team you played in in 2010? Do you feel it's a better team, a better squad now than then? Yo pienso que es, que es diferente, eh, no pienso ni que sea mejor ni peor. Eh, creo que hemos vivido la mejor época a nivel de historia de, de la selección con un equipo extraordinario de jugadores eh, veteranos y, y una mezcla también de jugadores jóvenes que, que empezábamos a, a jugar con la selección española. Vivimos un momento único, creamos una, una, un estilo de juego, una filosofía, implantamos yo creo al, al mundo del fútbol, pues esa posesión de balón, ese estilo, esa, esa roja, ¿no? que, que yo creo que llegó a todos los rincones del mundo con, con un cariño y, y un esplendor que, que acabó pues, acariciando al, al resto del mundo y disfrutamos del mejor momento a nivel histórico de, de nuestro país y los éxitos están ahí, dos Eurocopas y, y un Mundial. Y ahora pues una nueva era, ha pasado mucho tiempo, jugadores que han ido dejando la, la selección, pero... Los que antes éramos jóvenes, ahora somos veteranos, pero sí que viene una quinta de jugadores jóvenes con muchísima calidad, con mucha ambición, con muchas eh, ganas de ganar, de querer conquistar títulos y eso sigue manteniendo esa, esa, ese estilo que nosotros teníamos con un, unos jugadores distintos, pero eh, todos vamos en la, en la misma dirección. Pienso que, que Rusia va a ser el, el primer examen fuerte de de esta nueva selección y creo que vamos a hacer un, un gran papel. Spain will be one of the favorites to win the World Cup next year. Which other countries do you feel will be in that group? Germany, Brazil, the usual countries? Sí, yo creo que hay selecciones eh, muy fuertes para, para esta Copa del Mundo en Rusia y, y una de ellas pienso que, que va a ser Brasil y, 
y quizás la otra también Alemania, ¿no? que es una selección que eh, por muchos años que pasen siempre ha mantenido un, un equilibrio, siempre ha mantenido una estabilidad. Yo creo que Alemania también ha hecho mucho hincapié y ha sabido mantener ¿no? eh, esa juventud y ese estilo, tanto en la absoluta como en los jugadores jóvenes que venían y ahora pueden disfrutar también de esos jugadores jóvenes que suben a la, a la absoluta de prácticamente mantener esa, esa insignia y ese sello que mantienen las selecciones que, que trabajan también la cantera. Is it important that Russia have a good World Cup? The team gets out of the group for the momentum of the tournament. Hombre, eh, nosotros a priori en el primer grupo eh, no nos ha tocado, pero eh, yo creo que al final eh, cuando uno juega en casa y juega con, respaldada por su país, pues siempre tiene mayor responsabilidad, tiene un plus y un extra de motivación que eso, eh, quiera que no, se, se va a notar. Yo le deseo lo mejor a Rusia porque eh, cuando hemos ido pues siempre eh, nos han recibido con mucho cariño, pero le deseo lo mejor hasta que tengan que cruzar con, con nosotros y si tenemos que cruzarnos. Tell me your favorite moment from the 2010 World Cup, on the pitch or off the pitch. Is the one memory which makes you very happy? Yo creo que el mejor momento fue eh, cuando pita al final y sabes que eres campeón del mundo. O sea, eh, uno termina y, y sabe que, que te dedicas al fútbol, pero que en la pantalla se queda en negro y pone game over, o sea, no hay más, ¿no? Después de, de haber sido campeón del mundo, eh, hay pocas sensaciones no tan equiparables a, a lo que uno puede sentir siendo el, el campeón del mundo en un, en un deporte eh, colectivo. Yo creo que me quedo con ese momento, el momento de cuando coges la copa y, y la levanta, y quizás el momento que, que también me llamó mucho la atención, el recibimiento en en Madrid, ¿no? O sea, ir en el autobús y ver Gran Vía y todo Madrid lleno de banderas de España, yo creo que se me ponen los pelos de punta porque eh, son cosas que, que no se han vivido eh, en la historia y yo sí puedo decir el día de, de mañana que viví ese momento y, y siempre lo, lo llevaré conmigo. I'm gonna give you one choice to win the second World Cup with Spain with or me. with you, <laughs> with you lifting it, or the third consecutive Champions League, but you can only choose one. <laughs> this is difficult, eh? Uh, for me, both. <laughs> it's uh, difficult, but I think I've always separated it. If you have to choose a Champions League or a Champions League, o una Copa del Mundo, afortunadamente tengo tres Champions y una Copa del Mundo, o sea, eh, no me gusta mezclarlo, me gusta disfrutarlo, ¿no? pero de manera eh, diferente, el amor con tu mujer o el amor de un hijo, ¿no? eh, yo creo que no se pueden mezclar, pero eh, hay veces que es muy difícil decantarte por, por algo, pero afortunadamente como... Cuando eh, termina la temporada, empieza el Mundial, pues eh, durante el año te centras más en tu equipo y cuando acaba tu equipo te centras en, en la selección, pero son dos momentos eh, inolvidables. Y a día de hoy, pues eh, me quedan eh, pocas cosas por vivir en el, en el tema deportivo, pero como bien dice, he tenido la oportunidad de ser el, el único capitán en la historia de levantar dos Champions seguidas. No he tenido la suerte de levantar una Copa del Mundo. Eh, es algo que me inquieta porque desconozco. Finalmente, Cristiano Ronaldo, Portugal, you, Spain, first game of the World Cup. Um, a very interesting game to start. Yeah. Sí, eh, yo creo que va a ser un, un partido muy emocionante, muy esperado también porque al final es, es un país vecino que prácticamente y obviamente tanto Chris como yo, pues eh, capitanes de las selecciones, pues hay un morbo añadido. Eh, yo creo que son eh, pues la selección a batir porque son la actual campeón de Europa y campeona de Europa y en ese aspecto va a ser un duelo bonito para los amantes de fútbol y, y esperemos ¿no? conseguir una victoria porque sería eh, pues muy importante empezar en la Copa del Mundo con una victoria ante, ante la favorita. Sergio Ramos, muchas gracias. Un placer. We're going to take a short break, but stay with us as we take you to one of the most exclusive events in the football calendar. Don't go anywhere.
Following the World Cup draw in Moscow, the Russian embassy in London held an exclusive event where they presented the FIFA World Cup to the qualified nations and some of the world's biggest names. Even I managed to get myself an invite. The Stan Collymore Show today has come to the Russian Embassy in central London. Why have I decided to come in a beautiful new suit? It's simple. The World Cup next year in Russia is going to bring together 32 nations and the Ambassador has brought together the consuls from those other 31 along with the great and the good of English football to have a little bit of a shindig. Let's have a little look behind the scenes. How excited are you to have the World Cup in your home nation? It's been talked about a lot of times. When I was a kid, I remember uh, being told of players like Lev Yashin and the great Soviet teams of the early 60s. It's the realisation of a dream for many people in Russia. True. Two dreams. The first one uh, for our people is we built from the scratch 11 stadiums. Mm. So, and they are the world standard, FIFA standard. It means that, that after the games, everything will be for the people, for the young generation. So I'm happy about that. Second, of course, you know, we'll get new friends. And uh, since the football is the most popular game in the world, I'm quite sure that there will be some kind of a follow-up. And that's why I'm so happy. How excited are you as a, as a Russian broadcaster for people maybe in England? You're Russia's equivalent of Gary Lineker. Uh, how excited are you for the, for the year ahead? Yeah, really, I'm really very excited. And uh, to tell you the truth, I don't believe still. When uh, somebody think, well, Russia, and I'm a Moscovite. I was born and I live in Moscow. And I still, I can't believe that uh, the biggest event in football world uh, will, is coming to my homeland. I had the great opportunity of going in the summer to the Confederations Cup in Russia. And I have to say, my whole idea, my whole conception of Russia changed. Why was that? Well, I remember us having a conversation yeah, at Soccer X to that regard. Exactly. Well, you know, people think, right, you know, is it, is it going to be difficult? Is it the communications and the transport going to be difficult? I actually found quite the opposite. I was pleasantly surprised. I travelled around. I was in Moscow, St. Petersburg, Sochi, Kazan. And everybody was very welcoming and wonderful cities. Lots of people obviously want uh, Russia to host a very good World Cup. How important is it for the host nation to do well, to, to gain momentum in that country? Uh, I think it's very important. And I think that uh, one of the most important things that I would like to do is that they start dealing with the racism that they have in that country. Uh, and, uh, do you think they're doing that at all to your satisfaction? No, I'm not sure that they're doing enough. Um, I've had some players, I'm working as a football agent now, I've had some players playing over there and they've been uh, abused uh, and um, that's something that they need to deal with. Delighted to be joined by uh, Corey. That's thank a you wonderful much. moustache you have ah, there, sir. You. Corey. Yes. I just walked past here and it says English vodka. It is. You do realise we're in the Russian embassy oh, and Russia is very famous for Isn't vodka. Isn't that great? We were so happy to be invited here. Who are the runners and riders? Are they going to be the usual suspects? Brazil, Germany, Spain? Yeah, yeah Germans always do well in, in World Cups and Euros. You know, collectively, they seem to gather a head of steam when they're in the tournaments. I think Brazil, the magic of Brazil, I think, is gone after that result mm. last time around when they got smashed by, by Germany. I always like Argentina. Um, you know, Messi's can change games single-handedly. You know, the rest of the team could be good to average, but he could drag them through all the way. How competitive can Switzerland be in this tournament? Well, I think uh, very competitive, to be honest with you. And uh, if you see the last few tournaments that qualify again, I think a country like Switzerland, a very small country as such, to qualify in a row to such a big World Cup is a big thing. First of all, it's a merit because the youth academy in Switzerland is extremely good. They were the World Cup winner in the under 70s. And these under 17 kids are now the guys going to play in Russia as well. Oxford Rye Vodka. Yeah, so Tell us about it, please. So the Oxford Rye Vodka, um, the whole thing with our distillery, the reason we're interesting, we're special, uh, we use or organic polycultures of heritage grain. So all our grain is an ancient variety of grain and it's grown in farms around Oxford. Talk England, if we may. Yeah. Um, Tunisia, Panama and Belgium in the group. Mm -hmm. Is it a bit of a result that England have got Belgium last? I think it helps. You know, I think it really does help the fact that they, you know, they're expected to get those points on the board leading into that game because it's obviously the toughest. But you know, having seen these these games and these competitions over the years, 
can't remember an easy game that England have had, I'm totally honest with you. Could you make something up for us very Absolutely. quickly? So one of the things we're making, it's a cocktail, it's called a Moscow Mule. Of course. We thought it would be appropriate. Should we expect them to go and compete, or is this yeah, looking yeah. ahead to other tournaments? No, I'd, I'd be looking to compete here still. I mean, you know, Harry Kane and Deli Alley have already proved, you know, you watch Tottenham play Real Madrid and they can, they can match it with the best of them. I think we've got a great group of young players, but I say that every World Cup and we all get disappointed. What do you think of Sweden's chances? I mean, we showed that we could uh, beat Italy in the playoffs and we were in a group with Holland and France and still got second. So I think they uh, showed its togetherness. They work hard together and uh, difficult to beat. Of course, we're hopefully going to try to get better for the World Cup as well, but uh, no, they're going to be a difficult team to beat. Ginger. There's your ginger. Let's put it in, sir. Wonderful. Bit of the vodka, the good stuff. Look at that, he's done that before. How important is it for Russia as a country to be bitten by the football bug and then get out of their group for the momentum of the country? Yeah, you need you need that to happen. I mean, the Russian team has got to improve an awful lot, Stan. You know, the last tour, I thought Russia were a dreadful team. I've got to be perfectly honest. Yeah, do a little organic ginger beer. Excellent stuff. France are one of the favourites. How confident are you? Le Bleu will have a good tournament. If the big stars turn up, Pogba, the Griezmann, the Loris, uh, uh, the Varane, uh, the Conte, uh, we should do well. For me, when I look at, say, Belgium, they're like almost, for me, they look, they look like Spain. Just not playing amazing football and they just need one thing and they've got the team to kind of really kick it on. And when you look at the players they've got, everyone is playing really top, top football. So for me, you know, France, yes, they've got always going to be there. But I think Belgium is almost where Spain were at one stage, just needed that little bit of luck somewhere to click. Finally, the winners of the 2018 FIFA World Cup yeah. will be... I'm going to go with France. I'm going to go with France. I think they made a big mistake in the Euros, you know, probably not playing Kante in the final. Um, but the, the wealth of talent that they've got, I think, is going to be for us all to see. But yeah, I fancy France. Who's going to win the tournament? Ooh, tough one. Uh, Sweden. <laughs> and lighten the mint too. Oh, smashed mint. May I? You may. Enjoy a little Moscow mule. So here we have a Moscow mule from English Ingredients. Nazdorovia. Now we take you to one of the most competitive games in English football. It was the 230th Merseyside derby between rivals Liverpool in the red corner and Everton in the blue corner in the third round of the oldest cup competition in the world, the FA Cup. When I was a child, there were three trophies that I wanted to win. One was the FIFA World Cup, which of course will be paraded around the Luzhniki Stadium next June and July. Second one is the Champions League. We're at the Santiago Bernabeu recently with Sergio Ramos and got to hold that famous old trophy. And the third one is the oldest of them all, 146 years old. Arsenal have won it the most times. Do you know what it is yet? Yes, it's the FA Cup. We're going to be heading up to Liverpool, Anfield, where I used to play for Liverpool Football Club, as they take on their oldest enemy, Everton, for the 230th Merseyside derby. And the third round, a real traditional day in English winter sport. John, we're here at the home of the People's Club. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Goodison Park. John, you're one of the shareholders. Yes. You must be nervous, a bit excited. Just across the park there, where you're going to take yeah, us. Yeah, about it's quarter of a mile. Liverpool against Everton in the FA Cup third round. How excited are you today? Excitement builds up through the day, of course. So, so earlier today, it's just a, a recognition, oops, today's the day. Then you start doing your pre-match rituals. Probably for me, anyway, as a person, I start getting really nervous when the teams are announced. So you sit in the pub with your telephone, saying, what's the team going to be? And that's about an hour before kickoff. <laughs> and then, of course, we make the walk across the park here. And it's a 10-minute walk, and you, then you get friends around you, you get other Evertonians around you, people start to sing. And as you see that, their stadium, you start to think, right, this is for real, and the old hairs go up on the back of your neck. Although there's a rivalry, and a very close rivalry, but what is about Liverpool and Liverpool's football culture, where people generally do get on? People can be brought up in a family, and, and you know, I, I, I had a sister, you know, bless her, she's passed away, but she was a red, and I'm a blue. And, and that still happens in the and, city? And that still happens today. Well, will we see that? I mean, quite possibly, shirt. quite possibly. Yeah. You know, I've got cousins who are reds, I've got cousins who are blues. Same family, different allegiances. 
talk to us briefly about the FA Cup? Is it still important in English yes. football culture? Absolutely. It's the most romantic thing you can win, isn't it? The excitement, the waiting for the draw, the who are you going to get? You're going to get a big team, a small team, or even a non-league team. And a day out at Wembley to watch your team win the FA Cup cannot be beat. I've been there and it cannot be beat. Liverpool as a city has always been active. Yeah. Activists, people do stuff. We, yeah. When challenged, they'll, they'll uh, things like the food banks and stuff, yeah. which, are, which are active here that wouldn't necessarily happen in any other city. Why is that? Why I, is there a coming together for I the common good? I think it must be just be the personality of the people. We're, we're, we're all quite proactive, enthusiastic, and, and we don't sit on our hands and wait for things to happen. We try and make things happen for ourselves. What's the score tonight, please? 4-0 to Liverpool. 4-0. You go, look. They do exist. Liverpool and Everton half and half scarves. Nice and feisty, I was going to say. It's a big city, but there's a community feel to it. There's almost a village feel to it. Like, everyone sort of knows each other, blue and red, and, and they come together at the right times. And the food banks thing is absolutely brilliant. Because, because that's involved with it's both blues clubs. And reds. It's blues the and reds. The ticket prices, active fans from two big Premier League clubs coming together. It was Liverpool and Everton fans that, that drove that. What is unique in your experience in the city? Why, why they drive this kind of activism in the city? Because there is a rivalry, like I say, but the, like we know where to draw that line and we know how to keep the community feel of this city going. We, we want to help other people. And, and I think it's brilliant that, you know, we're here stood outside the football ground right now. There's millions of pounds washing around that game. What isn't brilliant is that, you know, a football kick away, there's people in poverty, people who can't afford to feed themselves. But yeah, as you say, behind us, there's a food bank van there. People, every match now, blues and reds, are giving money and giving food to that food bank. And it's part of the match day routine now. And it's because they want to help people in this community. Right, John, we're just over the road from uh, the Kenny Dog Leash stand here at Anfield. And again, that community spirit is evident because this lovely place here is a cafe now on match day, but it also doubles up as a food bank. If you wanted uh, a philosophy of perhaps what the, the city of Liverpool is about, perhaps it comes from uh, the famous Bill Shankly, a Scotsman. Everyone working for each other, everyone having a share of the rewards. Why do you do what you do? Because it's put help in the community, it's great and it's good fun. Well done. There we go. George, to a global audience yeah. that when people hear the music at Anfield, when they hear the voices of Anfield, you are that voice. I am. How long have you been at this famous old football club This is for? my 47th season. Does the FA Cup still give you the kind of thrill that it did 47 oh, yes. years yes. ago? Yes, I mean, I'm of an age, it means a lot more than some people. This is going to be a proper FA Cup match, FA Cup derby. Challenges going around on the pitch just as we like it. Fingers crossed for me, a former Liverpool player, maybe go on to the fourth round of the world's oldest cup competition, the FA Cup. 1 1, Everton have equalised in the derby against the run of play. Liverpool have been dominated, but as you can see, a, a 
And here, most importantly, the Everton fans have gone absolutely crazy. 1-1. That's all we have time for today. Hope you enjoyed the show. But join us next week as we go to the Big Apple for the Hudson River Derby and chat to French World Cup winner Patrick Vieira. Join us. Come on! <laughs>